Hey guys, it's Chloe. Welcome back or welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be really exciting because I have one of my favorite trucks right next to me, the 2020 Tacoma TRD Pro, which by the way, I've named Princess Leia because I'm a Star Wars nerd and I think she kind of looks like a Princess Leia. It's always really exciting starting a brand new build on a pretty much brand new truck and we have some exciting plans and modifications for you guys that will be coming up on the channel. But today we're going to start out with some really simple but unique easy modifications. So I have six new items we're gonna be installing in our Tacoma today that are probably the first or some of the first modifications I would do if I could go back in time on my 2019 Tacoma because they're some of my favorite, they're unique, and can definitely come in handy. I'll have everything linked down below in the description as usual in case you want to install any of these in your own truck. Also, I recently installed a suspension lift on this truck, so if you're interested in seeing me lift this truck, check out the description to find a link to that video. Before we get into all the modifications, I just wanted to take a minute to talk about Princess Leia specifically right here because some of you guys might be new to the channel and might not know this, but she's got a pretty, let's call it unique story behind her. So her first owner bought her brand new in New Hampshire, put 2000 miles on her, and then she got in a huge front end crash. And guys, this crash was so bad that she was salvaged. She was put up for auction in her salvage state with airbags deployed, a bent frame, and a lot of body damage. And then she was purchased and brought here to Southern California. Throughout 2020, I made a couple of videos documenting her build process. We straightened out her frame, got her sub assembly reworked, got all the body panels done. We replaced a bedside, installed new headlights, and just a bunch of broken components that were under the hood. And we got her pretty much back to stock. But the story does not end there because even though we thought we were pretty much done, she was registered, she was good to go, all of a sudden, a couple months ago, it seemed like the transmission cracked out. Now, I personally, and at the time, didn't have that much knowledge about sealed transmissions, which is what's in a lot of these newer vehicles, including these third generation Tacomas. And in fact, before I bought my 2019 Tacoma, every car I had and basically drove was over 20 years old. So it was a little bit difficult to self-diagnose the transmission issue, but I made a whole video about it and how we got it fixed. And now she is all good to go and we're ready to finally start our build process on her. So if you're interested in seeing more salvage Tacoma videos and some transmission issue videos, I'll have a playlist linked down below. But now let's get into the mods. Let's start out with a fan favorite mod. I actually have a full video on this and I think it's one of my most viewed on my channel. But anyways, it's the hidden dash cam mod. Let me explain what this is before I show you guys how to install it. So basically when you normally run a dash cam in your vehicle, you have to run your long power cable either down your windshield or route it through the headliner. But for the third gen Tacomas, there's this company called Dongar Technologies that has an adapter piece that allows you to get power from behind your rear view mirror to power your dash cam. This allows the install to not only be easy, but the end result looks clean and your dash cam is hidden and out of the way. So we're installing a Garmin Dash Cam Mini 2, which is a really small and reliable 1080p dash cam that we're putting in our Tacoma. And we're using the Dongar 12 pin adapter to pull power from behind our mirror for it. So to install this, I pulled the stock harness from behind the rear view mirror. Then one side of the Dongar adapter is a 12 pin harness that plugs into the back of the rear view and the stock harness that we just pulled out now goes into the Dongar adapter. The other side of the Dongar adapter basically has an open USB type A port. This is our power out for our dash cam. So we plug a micro USB cable into our Garmin dash cam. And then the other side of that USB cable goes into the female end on the Dongar adapter. And now we have power for our dash cam and our view is all clear of wires. And that took like 10 seconds to do. I just personally love this modification because if you decide to install a dash cam, this is just an easy solution and it's out of sight and out of mind. So to anyone that wants a clean and hidden dash cam solution, I highly recommend the Dongar Technologies adapter plus the Garmin dash cam mini. 
Besides capturing any potential accidents or really anything that might happen outside my truck, I really like running a dash cam also to get trail footage. For YouTube, I'm always trying to film when I can, so this thing really comes in clutch when I'm on the trails. And even if you guys don't do YouTube videos and you just want to get some cool footage of your trail runs, this is a really nice solution. Something you can easily do to brighten up your interior is replacing all of the halogen bulbs with LED ones. The stock lighting in the interior of these Tacomas is pretty poor, it just isn't that bright, and their amber color just doesn't look great in my opinion, like they barely light up these seats if you can see. So I decided to upgrade the lighting so I got a complete interior LED kit from the site Yodaverse, and it also came with this plastic removal tool which really came in handy. I started on the map light, so I first turned off all the interior lights, then used the plastic trim removal tool to softly pry at the plastic covers to expose the halogen bulbs. Now taking out these bulbs is a little tricky since the space is small, so the trick here is to take a piece of tape, wrap it around the bulb really tightly, and then pull the tape to pull that bulb out. This takes a lot of tries and honestly, a lot of tape. And I tried a couple different types of tape and I really found that duct tape worked the best for me. When I got the bulbs out, I replaced them with the provided MAP LED bulbs from the kit and polarity does matter here. So if it doesn't turn on right after you insert the bulb, try putting the bulb the other way around. Once you verify that it turns on, put your plastic cover back on and you're done. Next up, I did the vanity lights. This is pretty much the same concept as the map lights. You remove the plastic piece, then remove the existing bulb, put the new corresponding LED bulb in, test it, then put the plastic cover back on. For the dome light, to remove the cover, there are two plastic tabs to push down on with your trim removal tool in order to remove it. Again here, remove the existing halogen bulb and place the single dome LED one in. These LEDs are much brighter than these stock halogen interior bulbs. So I don't have the vanity lamps on right now, but if I open the mirror, you can see how much brighter that is. This is just nice. And another thing too, is that the TRD Pros in the Tacoma now come with LED headlights as well as LED fog lights. So it only makes sense to have everything be LED and match. The next mod is one for the instrument cluster panel. Now, this truck's cluster isn't too bad, but as you can see on my TRD off-road, mine was so badly scratched up, and this was just from like normal use. So what Screen Protect is, is it's a high quality paint protection film that's laser cut to precisely fit in your cluster to hide your existing scratches on it. And it prevents scratches, of course, from showing up in the future. The cluster comes out looking brand new with Screen Protect and you don't have to worry about seeing scratches every time you drive, which trust me, just got really annoying after a while. The kit comes with a microfiber towel, a squeegee, the film and cleaning solution that you just have to add water to. The install is pretty easy, but you definitely want to do it carefully and right the first time. You first spray your solution on your cluster to clean off any debris. Then take your film and spray the solution on both sides of it, spray down your cluster again, and then lay your film down on the cluster and fit it as best you can. You'll have to tuck your edges and the more solution helps with that since it lubricates the surface, but again, just take your time to fit it. When it's in place, it'll look like this. Yes, with a ton of air bubbles, but that's what your squeegee is for. So take your squeegee and run it from the middle of the film to the sides to get rid of those bubbles. And right after that, you're done.
Right after you install, the film may look hazy and not perfect, but in a few days, it'll cure and look perfect as long as all of those air bubbles are out. I remember the first time on my own truck that I cleaned my instrument cluster, I immediately regretted it because right after I wiped it off, I saw how many scratches I created. I was honestly so bummed because that's something you look at a lot when you're driving, so I was looking into actually replacing that plastic piece. However, when I found out about Screen Protect, I was so happy because not only did it actually hide the existing scratches, it has since prevented any further scratching even when I clean it. The film is self-healing, so it's really hard for scratches to be permanent, and even if they were for whatever reason, I can just peel it right off and put another screen protect on. If your truck is pretty new and it doesn't have scratches on its instrument cluster like this one, and you're kind of skeptical about getting this mod, honestly, I would say unless you really, really don't care about seeing those swirly scratches, this one is seriously one worth getting. It's better to prevent it, but if you do get those scratches, you can always hide it with the screen protect. If I can go back in time, honestly, this would be one of the first mods I do on my truck. Next up is our easiest mod in this video, the center console organizer and the glove box organizer. You can get these on Amazon and they're pretty self-explanatory, but they really do help you with keeping your truck organized. And I think they help to make good use of the empty space in these areas. The center console organizer is a single plastic piece with two rubber pieces to keep things from sliding that you put in it. All you have to do is drop it into your center console and you're done. With this mod, it's nice that you still have room in your center console since it just sits at the top and the center console is still pretty deep. With the glove box organizer, you have three plastic pieces that you fit together and then you place the whole piece into the glove box. It organizes the glove box into five sections, two big ones and three small ones. The next mod is another fan favorite, the seat jackers. This is something that elevates your seats and while I'll do my best to explain how these seat jackers make your seats feel a hundred times better when you sit in them, this is something that you really have to experience to truly understand. What these do is they elevate your legs, putting less strain on them to make you a lot more relaxed on longer drives. They don't change your height, they don't affect your power seats, and they're easy to install. When you order a pair of seat jackers, you'll get two seat jackers, which will either lift just the driver's seat or the passenger seat, depending on your choice. And for each pair of seat jackers, you'll get two grade 10.9 bolts. The only other things you'll need is a 14 millimeter socket, a 15 millimeter socket, a breaker bar, and a driver or a ratchet. First, break your front seat bolts loose and remove those. Make sure you move the front seat forward since you'll need access to the rear bolts. Now you should be able to lift your seats and place your seat jackers in. And to make sure that the seat jackers stay in place, use the factory front bolts to fasten the seat jackers to the floor. Then fasten the front of the seat to the top of the seat jackers using the provided grade 10.9 bolts. Lastly, place your rear seat bolts back in place and you can torque everything to 27 foot pounds or just make sure everything's good and tight. So I never really had back or leg problems to begin with and before I had the seat jackers in my own Tacoma, I thought the seats were decently comfortable. I wasn't really sure if they were going to have a big effect, but trust me, they really, really do. The seats are honestly just so much more comfortable and it's really crazy how big of a difference they make even in trucks with power seats like this one. I just showed you guys the seat jackers in this video, but Desert Does It also has a lot of other accompanying products for the seats that are really unique and best of all, I really like that they're super high quality. Quality is something I really care about in a product and as a whole I've never had a bad Desert Desert product. They are just top notch. So if you don't have these in your Tacoma, I really urge you to try them out because they might make a bigger difference than you think. 
The last mod I have to show you guys today is actually our first mod in this video that's for the exterior of the truck, and that is OEM bed lights. Before, the only lighting that you get in your bed is from the top brake light, and to be honest, it's pretty dim. So the OEM bed light kit gives you a wiring harness and lights to provide more LED lighting inside your bed. So step one to install this is to remove the OEM plastic covers on your bed sides. You can use a flathead to do this, or if you're careful, you can use your hand. Remove the three bolts here that are holding the taillight in, and then stand right behind the taillight and pull it out directly towards you to pop it out. Inside you'll see that there's this harness that's attached to the bed that you'll need to remove with a plastic trim removal tool or a flat head. There's this harness cover that is attached to the bed harness that you need to remove and you replace that with the corresponding side of one of the harnesses that you get in the bed light kit. Then run the other side of the harness through the hole that you see here and use your hands to fish out from the outside of that hole for that same harness. Once you pull that out, you can plug the other end into the bed light and then you can just snap your bed light in. The last thing to do is to snap the tail light back in place, then put your three bolts back, bolt them down, and then you're done. You guys, this is so easy and it makes such a big difference. And when it's pitch black outside, stuff like this matters. So this bed light mod is definitely very, very bright and it's great for nighttime. Unfortunately, I think this mod is only compatible with 2020 and up Tacomas and I'm not sure which trims these work with. I think you have to at least have the cutouts in your bed for this to work. It does not work for 2019 and below Tacomas. For how easy it is, I would say it's definitely you should do yourself if you order it as long as you have all the tools you'll need, really just a 10 millimeter socket and maybe a flat head. So yeah, I think this one's great and well worth the money. So we did six different easy mods today, and I think that there's some of my favorite to do on a third gen Tacoma, but still, out of the ones we did, I'd love to know which ones are your guys' favorite. Thanks so much for watching, I hope this video helped, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!